You know how they say even a broken clock can be right twice a day? This is kind of the opposite of that. Even somebody who usually gets things right can occasionally fuck it up. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Izzy, and this is the Izzy and Over Show. A little over a week ago, the Wall Street Journal ran a story about YouTube Google ads running on racist videos. The story was titled, Google's YouTube has continued showing brands ads with racist and other objectionable videos. With this story, the Wall Street Journal was essentially chastising YouTube for being a platform that rewards racism with revenue. A lot of people saw this story by the Wall Street Journal as a continuation of the attacks at the mainstream media lobbies against, uh, let's call it alternative medium, YouTube. In comes Ethan. Ethan, as I'm sure most of you know, is one half of H3H3 Productions, a comedy slash reaction video type YouTube channel. Lately, they've been doing these quasi-investigative journalism type pieces, which might be their undoing. So Ethan comes in and drops the spiciest video yet on the matter, full-blown accusing the Wall Street Journal of doctoring images for the story. A guy who made one of the videos cited by this Wall Street Journal story got in touch with Ethan and provided him with a screenshot of the analytics for that video. According to the screenshots that Ethan received, one of these offensive videos had a sharp drop in revenue, which Ethan interpreted to mean that YouTube had flagged that video because of the offensive word in its title and stripped it of any ad. So the point being, whoever made that video was not seeing any revenue, therefore there were no ads in that video, therefore the Wall Street Journal must have doctored these images to show ads where none would have been. Does that make sense? I think I fucked up the syntax on that one. Ethan's whole point is that the system worked as it should. There were no ads being showed in these videos, which must mean that the Wall Street Journal forged the screenshots and then wrote their article and strong-armed brands into stop doing business with YouTube, thereby hurting a lot of people's wallets. And there's one little detail that Ethan overlooked completely. Ethan's whole premise, based on that screenshot showing zero revenue being earned for that video, is that no no ads were being displayed, which is an odd conclusion for somebody who's worked with YouTube for years and presumably understands how revenue, and most importantly in this case, copyright claims work. The possibility that Ethan completely ignored is that that video contained elements which were owned by someone else, and that someone else then put a copyright claim on the video. Therefore, they would get their revenue and the uploader would see a sharp drop in the money that they should be earning for that video. Which is exactly what happened once you look into the source code of the archive video in question. As you can see here, it shows that the videos were displaying ads, but that they were claimed by an entity called Omni Media Music. They were earning revenue uh, for that video. This struck me as such a weird argument to make. When the news first broke, I was not home, so I couldn't watch the whole video. And the first thing I thought was like, well, but what if the video was copyright claimed by somebody? I've had that happen to my videos. That's exactly what you would see on your end. But because the internet was in was in a frenzy over this, and because Ethan is has a pretty decent reputation on reporting things accurately, I was thinking, I'm sure he went over this, I'm sure he explains why this isn't the case, I'm sure there's more evidence in the video to support his findings, nope. The other super weak argument in that video is that the images must be doctored because some of them showed the same view count, which is again, a very odd thing to say if you've been working with YouTube for a while and you have known of their let's say infamy for not knowing how to count. Furthermore, three of these screenshots came from the same exact video that we showed was not monetized. In fact, two of them have the same exact view count. How is it possible to serve two different ads to the same exact view? Are you sure about that? YouTube view counts have been buggy forever. You can see it for yourself. Open any video, any video whatsoever, and just keep hitting F5. You're gonna reload that page and you're gonna see that view count stay the same. And sometimes you'll even see different ads load every time you hit F5. YouTube views are not counted in real time, and this is something that everybody, I think, has known for a very long time. It seems like Ethan just jumped the gun on this one. He was so eager to be the first one out with this story, and he was telling everybody, share this with everybody you know, this is very important. We have, we have proof, we found proof that the Wall Street Journal was doctoring images to, to further their agenda against YouTube, and in the process, his hysteria 
might have cost the YouTube community as a whole its credibility. We had a pretty decent case about the Wall Street Journal trying to fuck with YouTubers with the whole PewDiePie thing. After this, people skeptical about the idea of mainstream media gunning for YouTube have a pretty good reason to deem us all crazy conspiracy theorists. This is a pretty big fuck up for Ethan and he himself admits this because he has since pulled that video and he put another video explaining, hey, you know, we screwed up. He still tried to be like, yeah, you know, I still think that doesn't make sense. He did admit that he fucked up. And he himself pointed out the irony that in that video, he was chastising the Wall Street Journal for not being thorough and not actually checking their sources when he himself did that. So yeah, that is pretty embarrassing for the H3H3 brand. Like I said in the beginning, maybe this whole investigative journalism thing is just not for them. They got it right a couple of times, they got it massively wrong this time, and perhaps I'm being a little bit harsh on the guy. Or maybe not, because Ethan has been known to jump the gun in the past. Remember Humongous? Would you be surprised to find out Humongous never had cancer? Because from what Ethan said uh, on Twitter in that whole fundraising thing, it seemed like Humongous had cancer. Rudy is going through fucking cancer treatment. He had to then walk back that claim because he figured out that Humongous didn't actually have cancer. He was going for screening. So saying that the guy needed money for cancer treatment was him again kind of fucking things up. And I want to think, I want to say something here. Ethan is very clearly a well-meaning guy. He's a nice guy. I don't think he does, he did any of these things. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that the guy is, is being willfully dishonest with any of these things. I'm just saying he has this tendency of putting his foot in his mouth and this time it just it was more public than before so ethan he's never gonna watch this but you have two choices here you can either you can you can continue with this this whole new thing of of investigating things and doing exposés on youtube it's it's a great thing but you do have to be more thorough. But you gotta be more careful in the future. He made some pretty dumb accusations about an entity that has a lot more money than you, and I don't have to remind you, you were already on the legal chopping block. So you don't want another lawsuit, trust me. So two choices, either you continue with the whole investigative journalism thing, but be more thorough, and don't publish something until you're certain of the findings, or just roll that whole thing back and, and do comedy, which is obviously your stronger suit. But I'm very curious about what you guys think. As always, leave the comments down below. And I, again, I, I have to say this, I'm still a big fan of Ethan. He's clearly a nice guy, he's a well-meaning dude, but he has to be more careful with these things. When you have a big audience like that, you have a responsibility. And while I commend him for, for pulling the video down and explaining his mistake, we all know that these retractions never never reach as many people as the original accusation. So there is a responsibility. But as I said, I'm very curious about what you guys think. If it's your first time here in my channel, consider subscribing. And that's all the time I have for today. I'm Izzy and I'm done. Ah, uh, Ethan. That was pretty embarrassing. Uh, but, but you know what? When you're a professional opinion giver in a public platform, it can't be helped. You're going to say some dumb shit from time to time. And how you deal with that is what differentiates a well-meaning person from an asshole.